Oh, sorry, I didn't realize people were already here. Um, okay. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In the, today's video, it's going to be a very special video. Um, it's the, the most requested video in the history of my channel. Also, the first requested video in the history of my channel. Um, so yeah, as you probably guessed by my super cool outfit, we are going to be making custom armor together. And also, custom tools and weapons and stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, that's basically it. Um, it's going to be using Optifine for the armor, and as for the weapons, I'll teach both an Optifine method and a non-Optifine method. Uh, this tutorial is kind of mainly because of me making armor for Solidarity Gaming, uh, and then people kind of wanted to know how I made the armor. So. I guess this is also an explanation for how I did it. But yeah, that's basically the, the premise of this video. Um, I hope you enjoy, and uh, let's get started. Hi, this is me from the, 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 the future, like a day later. So as you can see, I'm a really cool person now. I've got a mask, um, and you can also see that I don't have any armor or a weapon yet. Um, well, um, I am not that good in estimating how long something takes to explain, so just making this mask took 41 minutes apparently, so um, the rest will come in a later video. So yeah, that that's just me coming from the future telling you all you will learn is to make a like fancy three-dimensional helmet, um, the the actual like chest plate, leggings and boots, and a, a normal helmet that's two-dimensional like in Minecraft, um, those can come in the second video. And then, if I want to make weapons eventually, there will also be a third video and explaining how to make uh, just any item. Um, but yeah, that's just pretty quickly me explaining this because um, I messed up in calculating how long things would take, and this is already 40 minutes. So, uh, yeah. Um, bye! Okay, so before we get going on the actual modeling and the texturing um we obviously need the, the programs to edit textures and to model and to open files properly and all that um okay so first of all uh the the first program that we need is blockbench super cool logo shown totally not in editing okay so blockbench is a 3d modeling program which is used to make 3D models, like my hat, or my, my magical wand, or if you want to see it in compared to Jimmy's resource pack, that would be his uh, cod hat, his shield, his bow, and also his sword, but let's not talk about that one, it's a bit complicated, and all of his tools, because they're all 3D models. Second, we need paint.net. Not Microsoft Paint. Microsoft Paint is bad. Don't use Microsoft Paint. Um, the the reason for that is because Microsoft Paint doesn't support transparency, and Paint.net does, and also Paint.net is just objectively speaking better, um, and it's free, so it's really quite good. Um, and apart from that, next, uh, last but not least, is a Visual Studio Code. Um, uh, Visual Studio Code is a super cool. Code editor. Ooh, whoa. Yeah, for everyone who's watching this, who's probably not a programmer, uh, scary. Yes, tons. Basically, all that that is is uh, basically a text editor like Notepad, but it has syntax highlighting. It can open folders, and then you can see all the files inside. You can open the files. You can have multiple files open at the same time. It 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 it. Auto corrects you at some times and just auto completes and it's cool and awesome um, and I, I advise using it. Um, but yeah, that that's basically all the programs that you need. All three of those uh, will have download links in the description down below, um, and and you can just click them and download them. I trust that you know how to download it now. So yeah. Anyway, that's basically it. Um, that let's actually get started on the the, the modeling and the programming. Okay. Alright, don't 
mind the fact that there's suddenly more of my screen visible. Okay, so before we can get started on making all the models and all the texturing, what I generally do is first make a research pack for, to, to test it out inside of, uh, because you need to be able to see things, right? So this research pack you need to obviously put somewhere to make it usable. So what I uh, do generally is just click on options, research packs, and here you can see open pack folder, meaning that you open your research pack folder. And then when you click on that, you're going to be put inside of research packs, and you're ch probably gonna have less research packs than this. I had significantly more before I cleaned it up. This is just, you know, more recent projects, you know? <laughs> I'm a busy person, okay? Most of these are unreleased, by the way. Um, some of these are unreleased and very much are able to be released because they're already, like, all done. But, you know, hey, it's fine. Why would I ever upload something? Nah. Um, anyway. Yeah, inside of here is where you're going to make a new risk pack. By just saying, hey, I want a new map, you know, new folder. Uh, don't mind my Dutch. Everything is in Dutch because I, in fact, am Dutch. Um, okay, so here you can just put some text, like, this is a tutorial. And then you can go in here, and there's absolutely nothing yet, but there shall be. Um, in order to open your research pack properly, you know, having it open in, in, in Windows Explorer is literally just as good, but, you know, hey, I like this more. So we're going to open command prompts, and I hope you know how to use it because it is super cool so I just press enter and this has appeared on another monitor so yeah you can see yep Microsoft Windows blah 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 more Dutch um but yeah you can see that this is my file location right so it's pretty cool um anyway so instead of here what I do is just type code dot saying hey I want to open my code editor in uh, this folder so then you can see right now it, it i'm just uh, inside of the folder it, it doesn't really look all that cool but if i make a new file and say test.txt txt use a text file and say hi and save and now go back to my windows explorer you can see i made a new file anyway. So what I'm now really quickly going to do off camera is really quickly make all of the beginning files and folders so you just don't have to look, go through that. Um, and I'll probably also put this begin point in the description. Okay, I did it. Okay, so um, as you can see, this is my folder structure. I'm going to close the assets folder for just a moment. And I'm going to focus on uh, these two. Okay, so you have back of PNG. This is just a random image. Um, it, it needs to be a specific size, blah blah blah. It's just an image which is shown as the icon of the research pack. If it's not there, it's not the, uh, 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 a very big deal. I think it still functions, but it doesn't look anywhere near as cool because you can have your own image, which is significantly better instead of just the, the standard, hey, missing texture. Uh, image. Um, then you have the pack.mc uh, meta. This is very necessary. Because this uh, gives your pack its information. It basically tells you, hey, this is my research pack. It is, it has the, uh, data in the pack. It has a format, which is 7, which tells you which version it's supposed to use. If you have a lower number, then it, it says, hey, this version is incompatible with the research pack. And that's all it does. It just says, hey, it's for this version. And you have the description. The description is the text that it displays. And... This looks very complicated with my syntax highlighting. It looks, ooh, it's code. Basically, all it's saying is, hey, it has text, which is made by, and then it has a color, which is this color. And then it has text, which is someone likes to copy paste. And then you have a color, which is this color. You can also say, hey, it uh, should be italic. True. Um,. It's just the classic JSON format. If you want to learn JSON to the point of using a generator to do it for you, uh, I will put a link to a JSON generator in the description. It's really quite simple. And when I say JSON generator, I mean 
for Minecraft, not JSON in general. Um, yeah. Anyway, then you have the assets folder, which is uh, really complicated. Um, as in, it has a lot of things in it. So you have the Minecraft uh, namespace, which is what vanilla Minecraft uses. And then there's something called my namespace. You can rename this to COD Armor. You can rename this to uh, 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 Awesome Armor. You can rename it to basically anything. You can't use spaces, I think, and you have to use lowercase, I think. Otherwise, you might get issues, but you can just name it to something like tutorial. What an original name, I know, right? Um, so yeah, this is where you're going to put your models. Um, because that's better. Basically, otherwise, you have a, a chance that someone else puts a model with the same name in the same folder, and then you start overriding each other. And that's kind of an issue, it's not the best. Um, you know. So, just to avoid that, what I always do is for every single project, I make a new namespace folder inside of my resource pack. So, for instance, for my Shadowlands data pack, it's Shadowlands. For my Steampunk Snail, I say Steampunk Snail. And just like that, I just separate everything all nice and tidy, and everything is way better. And sometimes I have multiple, so for my superhero pack, for every single superhero, I have a different folder. Just so everything is proper and neat and organized. Um, okay, so instead of the Minecraft folder, which is the vanilla uh, uh, assets, I made a models folder, and so that I made an items folder. So in there we're going to be changing the vanilla items. So for instance, if I want a stick to be my custom item, my custom weapon, my custom thing, um, when not using Optifine, you need to remodel a normal stick. But um, let's let's go ahead and go to Minecraft really quickly. Don't look at the virus, there for later. Um, so for instance, if you get a bow. Uh, this is one item, but if I shoot, it has four different states. You can see it has not been drawn back. You can drop slightly and you can, you know, it has multiple different models that it cycles through. These are models and all the models do is say use this texture, but it is a different model. So basically we'll be using a predicate saying, hey, the condition for using a different model is some data which can only be changed in creative mode. Um, so sadly, in vanilla Minecraft, you can't change a model dependent on the name. You have to use a mod like Optifine to do that for you. But I will be also showing how to do that using Optifine. Um, just, first of all, I want to show you how to do it in uh, vanilla Minecraft, no mod, because that's generally how one does it. And then here I have an Optifine folder where we're going to be changing the armor, because that can't be done in vanilla Minecraft, so you need Optifine. Um... And also doing the custom item using the name trick. Um, but yeah, that's basically the full thing explained for the Minecraft folder. Um, then the tutorial thing is where we're going to be putting our uh, custom models. So the models slash item will reference something that is in here. And this will reference one of the textures. So, yeah. Um, that's basically that. Um, I hope I've been relatively clear. Um... But yeah, that, that's basically that. It should be relatively self-explanatory once I get to actually making the models and the textures and putting them in the, those locations. You'll just see where I put the things and I'll explain it a bit better when I actually get going with all that. Um, but yeah, on to the, the next phase. Okay, so first of all we're going to be working on a helmet. Um, and for this helmet, we're obviously going to be making a 3D model. Uh, just like the, the hat that Jimmy has, for the cod hat with the antlers. Um, okay, so what for the, this you need to do is to open Blockbench, as you can see here, it's Blockbench. Um, and first of all, I'd like to explain all the differences when you open Blockbench to when I open Blockbench. Okay, so all the colors, they are preferences. I have changed all of them because I like my colors. You can go to theme, change every single color, and do this until your heart is content. Um, you might be busy for quite a while, but, you know, it, it looks quite nice. Um, then after that, the main difference of every color is different you have. You probably have less options here. 
because, well, some of these are, uh, you know, non-public. Um, and you probably have less recent models because you probably haven't modeled anything yet. Um, okay, but what we want is a Java block slash item. Because, well, we want it for vanilla Minecraft, no mods, not bedrock edition, Java edition. So here you can see loads of things and I just click away and just ignore it completely because ignoring it completely works. So that's good. Um, okay, so you can press the button here for add a cube. Then you can go over here, say resize. You can resize it to be any cube that you want. And, and you can click here for rotate, and then you can rotate it around a certain point. If you want to rotate it around different points, you can click on pivot and move it. And then you can rotate it, and then it rotates around a different point. As you can see, however, you can't rotate it on two axes. That's one of the limitations of Java Minecraft, you can only rotate it on one axis in increases that are really jacket, which is quite annoying. Um, but yeah, that's basically that. Um, also, you can see that I am just doing all of this oops, uh, without clicking on these, it's, it's because you can see I have, you know, shortcuts. Oh, also, if you have two cubes, uh, yellow, um, and you would like to like move them you can use vertex snap to like move it nicely and you can also use vertex snap to like click on you and click on scale instead and then click to this corner you can see it scales up to be perfect right really nice um but yeah that's basically that that's all these tools you can go to preferences keybinds and here you can see basically all the things that there are <laughs> and, you know, yeah, all of the keybinds that are there, <laughs> um, you know, it's lots, but, you know, hey, if you want to get going, it saves a lot of time, I'll admit that. So I do advise using the keybinds and changing them to what you like, um, but it, 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 it will probably take a long time to, like, properly get everything situated for you to get used to how everything works, um, but yeah, that that's basically that. Um, but yeah, without anything else, I think I'll uh, get going on actually modeling the thing. And I'll probably just put a time lapse of me modeling it and then get back to me explaining what I've modeled and then continue modeling and then explain and then continue modeling. Um, just so it's a bit in steps, but you actually have some showing of what I've been doing. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get started. Okay, so this is my base. It um, doesn't really look all that impressive yet, but uh, I think it will. Um, okay, so what this exactly is, is this yellow cube, uh, cube in the middle is my head, which you could see me uh, use display to position all nicely. And then here I have a folder, or a group, uh, and inside of that I just put all of my uh, cubes that are actually relevant to my thing. Um, it's 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 not necessary. It's just you know how I do it. Um, okay, so then you can see that that's all nice. Uh, the the another thing to notice is that this has actually no top face and no bottom face and no face on uh, this side, which is done by uh, saying. Uh, Clicking on the cube, first of all, so I can click here. You can see that this is the east side, this is the south side, and this is the west side, by which thing is selected. So I can click on the south side, right click, texture, transparent. And then, now, this has no longer a face. Um, so yeah, because this is going to be like a headband, holding it to your head, um, because it's going to be like a mask, right? Um, but yeah, a headband shouldn't be, like, proper three-dimensional in my mind, so I've, I've made it like this. Uh, I've also used the same trick over here. Um, so yeah. Also, uh, these uh, should be uh, slightly bigger, because right now they are a width of zero. But that means that this face, 
and this face are in the same position, right? And that means that later on my texturing is going to start fighting over which one should be placed here, uh, which is called Z fighting. So I'm just going to put it 0 0.01, and now it's just slightly bigger, but that should be enough so it doesn't have any issues like that. Um, okay. Yeah, that's basically it. If I now go to my display settings, you can see this all looks bad, but if I click on my head, so what it looks like if I put it on my head, um, you can see here, this is how it looks. Um, which is actually quite nice in my opinion. And you can see that I fiddled with the, the height of it a bit, because it actually was here, and then I moved it up here. Um, and I also messed with the scale, because it, it was normally a good bit smaller, but I made it bigger, so it actually covers your head. Um, okay. Also, this would normally be not visible. So, what it looks like is uh, this, whenever I'm wearing it. Also, this skin is able to be changed once again, in just, you know, preferences settings. You get the drill. Um, okay. But yeah, now that I've got this base thing of just bland colors, um, also you can change the color by going to marker color and then picking a different thing there. Um, but yeah, now that we have all that, what I want is to exclude my head and only target my hat and say that I want to have a new te uh, texture for this section, right? And let's name this hat because I'm great at naming things. And what I want is for this to be a template. And I do want padding. Now, you don't know what any of this does, not all that relevant. But if I now click confirm, you can see now I've got this beautiful 64 by 64 texture with all of the faces having their unique things. You can see here the headband has a thing and it all has colors depending on where it looks. But if you for instance, get this color, you can see that I can now paint on it and just paint my own thing. Um, so yeah, it, it's great. Now I can just draw on it and it's all nice. I can save this and then use paint.net edit it if you prefer that. Um, or you can just edit it using the paint setting. And then you can ha have a paintbrush, you can have a filling an entire face. You can uh, fill an entire cube, so like that. Um, you can also fill connected colors, you can fill any colors, you can erase a texture, you can color pick, you can draw a shape like this. And you can do a lot of extra things. Um, but yeah. Let's uh, get going on actually making a thing now. Okay. Okay, so I've now got some base colors down. Um, all I really wanted to show you now is that what I can do is click here, Control C, so I copy this face. Go over here, click here, you can see now it's the south side. I can Control V, and now you can see I copy the texture. Now I can click on UV Mirror X, and now you can see I've mirrored the texture. So now I can do that in a slightly faster pace, again and again and again. And then you can see now it, it's the same forwards as backwards. Also, you can just copy it from over here. Um, you don't need to click on a specific side to ch change which direction it is. You can also click on these. Um, it's just a matter of what you're used to. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll uh, continue on the, the base now and uh, yeah. Enjoy continuing watching, I guess. Okay, so I've now kind of got my base down. Uh, there, there are some small refinements that I can do, like changing that, changing that, you know, some, some small details. But for the most part, this is basically done now. Um, at least the front, not the back. Um, so yeah, what I can now also do is just do that, 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 just, you know, continue along with this. Um, but what I wanted to, first of all, kind of point out is that while I kind of do that and that, um, and really quickly just go ahead and finish it. Um, 
I messed up slightly here, but that's not all that relevant. Um, yeah, while now this is all really good looking, this is now what I, I was talking about before with these feathers. Uh, right here you can see that sometimes it's one texture, sometimes another, sometimes it's a mix of the two. It's kind of a small area, so it's kind of difficult to, to, to show. Um, yeah, the, the way to fix that is by making them not at the same location, obviously. So I just say, hey, yep, you are negative 0 0.01 down. And now you see that there's no longer that issue. Now you do have the fact that this color is not that color, right? So we can just really quickly fix that, like uh, so. And if I do the same thing over here, there we go. And now it should be basically perfect. Um, but yeah, that that I really quickly just wanted to show you that. Okay, so it's mostly finished now. Um, I might change the, the, the textures a tad, make the, the colors slightly better, because this was obviously quite rushed. Um, but I think it looks quite nice by now. Um, but yeah, so next is... Let's really quickly just put some display settings on this. So what generally works is saying, hey, I would like to apply... Uh, a preset, which is just how blocks normally look. Um, and let's just do that for most slots except for the head. Um, and you as well. Uh, we can, you can now see that it looks kind of small. Um, so now it's really quickly just change it slightly so it's a bit like that. So let's now rotate it so it's a bit more focused on the actual masks section instead of more of the band which is empty air. Okay so this is how it looks in your inventory. This is how it's going to look when it's in an item frame. You should be able to just be one one one. Uh, on the ground you should just uh, be fine, there you go, so then this is how it looks on the ground, then you obviously have it on your head, which is already done, I think I might make it slightly smaller, um, I've gotten so good at guessing where things are, okay, so you can see now this is basically at your head, uh, I might do it slightly lower as well. A bit like that. Okay. Then now in my hand, well, first of all, let's just really quickly do uh, this. You can be a bit like that. Let's just make it a eight. There we go. Uh, you can be a bit like that. And that's how it's. Well, that's not the right buttons. Um. So that's how it looks when you're holding it. Then, now when you're holding it in third person, you need to obviously also make it look like something. Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, that is a bit too big in my mind. I'll just keep it like this, I think, and just move it so that you're holding it. Okay, there we go. So that's now how you're holding it in your right hand and in your left hand. Okay. So that's basically all of the display settings all done, but now comes the fact that you need to save things. Right? So now let's go to... Uh, you can get closed and you can get opened. Okay, so now I need the texture to be here, right? So I say right click on the item, because item is different from textures, and click copy path, then go back to block bench, 
and save this. Not in my chair. I want this in my tutorial. Reach back in the texture slash item inside of the tutorial thingy. I'm just gonna save this as hat because I am 100% sure that there won't be an another hat in this. Um, well, there will be, but that will be for later. Um, so now the texture is saved, but the texture is if I edit it. Um, and then click away all of the things that are for the video. Um, you can see that this won't do as just this. I, I need something to interpret what this means. Um, so that is the model. So I want to export this as a block slash item model. And this is not a battleship. This is also not a texture. This is, when you go to the tutorial, namespace, you can see models, item. And here I just name it hat. And you can see it's saved as hat.json. Um, and now I can click this away. Um, so now if I go over here, you can see this is my resource pack, and I now have a hat.json and a hat.png inside of my resource pack. So now all I need is to add a way of viewing this model inside of Minecraft. Okay, so I've added the model in the vanilla Minecraft section. So this model is now going to replace all carved pumpkin items. Um, okay, so what is replacing it with? Well, the exact same as it normally is. The block carved pumpkin as a parent. So it refers to and uses all the data from this thing. Um, however, it has overrides, saying that it should override it if the predicate, which is here, is true, then it should use this override. And it is top to bottom, so if I have this one here, and add another one, uh, and make this two, and then say hat two, then first it checks this one, then it checks this one, but if this one is true, then it won't use that one, right? So it, it basically stops, basically bottom to top, I guess is a better way to explain it, bottom to top, and it stops if it finds something that matches. Um, but yeah, so what this does is say, hey, if it has the predicate custom model data 341501. So if the MBT data, called custom model data, MBT data is something like the name uh, or the durability or anything like that, that's MBT data. Um, but there is a custom MBT data thing which is basically only used by research packs called custom model data and can only be gotten through a GIF command. Um, yeah, if the value for that is 341501 or above, it'll uh, be true and it'll use this model. Uh, why did I pick this rate of a number? Well, that's because other people might also want to replace the carved pumpkin. So uh, this is the number that I picked for what this research pack is. And this is the number that I picked for this item, 01. Um, and then my next one would be 02 and keep up in these two digits. Oh, and you should be aware of trying to keep it below eight digits because I remember that there is an issue and if and it's above eight digits that it starts getting a bit wacky. Um, as in that sometimes it doesn't do what it's supposed to. Um, anyway, so now with all that done, if I now give myself a pumpkin, it doesn't work. Why? Because I need to, first of all, have enabled the resource pack. So it needs to be like, put into the select section and then I need to refresh it if I had already done that. So that is by pressing F3 and T at the same time. And now you can see in my inventory I've got a beautiful carved pumpkin. However you can see that I still have that cube in the middle. Um, that's because while I made it invisible it still existed. Anyway. So now you can see that while in first person I have a very big pumpkin shoe, but yeah, basically it's quite nice and I now have all of that. You can go ahead and look into my face. Uh, but yeah, that's basically that. The, the issue, however, is that there is the cube in the middle, but I'll really quickly remove that. 
Okay, I removed the cube, but now you can see it's a whole lot more logical, right? Um, so now if I put this on, you can now see that I've just got a hat, and you can see my eyes through it, because I made this for my skin, and my skin has eyes right there. Um, but yeah, you can just walk around. You can take one of these, take an armor stand, right? And use this armor stand and place it down and, uh, you know, obviously it is still a carved pumpkin, so I do still have this image on my screen. Yeah, you can just give it to an armor stand and then it looks perfect, just the way it is. Uh, and yeah, that, that's basically it for the helmet, um, with all the custom, you know, bits and bobs, you know. However, it is not quite done yet, um, because I also promised on explaining how to change it by name, um, but yeah. So, this is for the custom model data version, this is now inside of the, 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 also inside of the video description, it's a pastebin link to this whole thing. Um, okay, so there is, however, still the Optifine folder, right here, which uh, was unused until I just made this. So, I uh, have a hats.properties, I have a hats.png, which is the texture from over here, and I have a hats.json, which has been changed to use dot slash hat, which is not how it works in here, because this is how normal Minecraft uses it, but Optifine doesn't understand that you can have different namespaces, so it just says, hey, I want it in this folder slash hat so inside of sit slash hat so this folder uh, sorry this file is what it uses as a model it replaces scarf pumpkins and it is an item right however that's not quite everything that i wanted because i obviously also said i wanted to just make it so that only when it has a specific name that's mb3.display because it, the name is one of the display settings uh and then that is name and I can say, well, if that is equal to, well, I want a bit more than just setting text here. Because, well, um, because while this would work, it's a bit messy. And I would like it to... I may or may not be reading documentation at the same point as um, making this. Um, where does it say that? should say eye pattern. I remember exactly what it says, but I want to not mess this up. And I, there it is, eye pattern. Eye pattern, um, which can then have it kind of on, and here is basically what I now should set. So I should say that this is mask, but I want it not to just only be whenever someone names it mask, I want it to be whenever someone also uh, has something in front or behind it, which is what I did with Timmy's items. So I said COD, but something before, something behind. So it became COD father thing. And just anything really like that. So now, if uh, this is the carved pumpkin that existed, this is a normal carved pumpkin. And now I should uh, give at S anvil. You can also do this through the creative inventory, but I am smart, so I'm doing it this way because it's totally at all better. Um, so yeah, this is now cool mask. Also, because I used eye pattern instead of, I think it's pattern, uh, it's also in uh, case in uh, sensitive, so naming it mask with lower M also works. If you do this, now it has to be capitalized. But I like it not necessary. Anyway, so now if I refresh my research pack, it should all work. Okay, so now you can see that this carved pumpkin isn't anything. This carved pumpkin is the one that does it by, uh, by a vanilla Minecraft using custom model data, and this is the one that uses the custom name technique. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. I can also show how it looks when renaming the item and already having equipped it, so then you can just say mask, and then you can see that this changes it. Really simple, really awesome. I'll probably also put uh, this in a base bin. So yeah. Um, also, I'm not going to give you the model that I made, I'm, like, as in the, the uh, not the carved pumpkin, but my hat, because I want you to make your own things and not just take mine, because that's not how learning works. Um, 
but uh, this I, I will let you take because that's just making it slightly quicker. Also what you can do is just put a folder in here like tests and then putting these all inside of the test folder. And then renaming this test to something else is how you would make sure that it is your custom thing. Because putting this Optifine folder inside of your custom namespace doesn't work like I mentioned. It just breaks. Um, so then this would then be for instance Solidarity is what I did for the, the one. That's a Jimmy use. Um, but for the moment I'll, I'll just say tutorial. And now if I refresh it should all still work. And there we go. So you can see now that even though uh, this one um, doesn't have it directly in the sit folder, it uh, does still work. Um, but yeah, uh, seeing as it's probably going to already have been around 40 minutes right about now, um, I am thinking that I will leave the armor for a following video where I'll just do the armor and properly explain how to do the armor instead of rushing it in five minutes. Um, and then maybe if you guys want, I can also do one specifically for a held item, like maybe like a staff or something. And then also adding in, um, making it do something custom, like shooting a projectile. Um, but yeah, and that would then be using also data packs. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch me make a custom item like that, then let me know in the comments down below. Um, the armor I am almost de most definitely going to make, but uh, I don't know yet about the custom item, just doing a projectile thing, or whether or not I should just stick to doing it uh, purely resource pack based. Um, but yeah, uh, that that that's basically it. Uh, normally I would do it inside of this box, but uh, outro right here. Woohoo! I'm cool like that. Um, I'm totally not lazy to get my camera count on. No, nothing to do with it. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, leave a like. Um, or, you know, go to the video section and click on, on another video. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.